I was a park ranger for a short time in Yosemite National Park, and anyone who knows that park has been told there are no wolves there. This was great for me when I started working there after college in summer of 2012. It was my first real job and the job I always wanted. I felt safe with the friendlier wildlife and even the animals that posed a threat were rather afraid of people. I had never really had to worry about beasts that could harm me. One evening, I was finishing up my shift in one of the backcountry cabins, just getting it ready for whoever was staying there next, chasing out any vermin. It was a small cabin with a bed, a table, and a stove. I had decided to stop and eat my dinner there before heading back and clocking out when I heard something outside the door. The sound was muffled by the walls of the cabin, so it wasn't very loud, but it got my attention. I grabbed my flashlight and headed out onto the porch where I could see better. It was becoming darker outside earlier since it was later in August, but the sky was still orange and purple. I saw nothing at first, but then noticed movement behind some trees where I heard the noise. It looked like the sun didn't reach back that far. And then I noticed two eyes glowing red in the dark, reflecting off my light as they moved around surveying me and my cabin. Then there was another set, and another. I had never seen an animal with red eyes like that. Suddenly I had a ton of eyes looking through the trees and the bushes at me. After watching these eyes for several minutes, they all began to move back further into the woods and away from me. I wasn't sure what I was seeing, and I didn't know if I should investigate. I decided to head back inside and grab my taser just in case. I didn't have a rifle with me, and it was getting late, so no need to not be 100% safe. At least I knew they were expecting me back at the office, so someone would come if I got hurt. I grabbed my taser, went back outside, sitting down on the front porch steps to watch these creatures return. And then all of a sudden... A huge wolf appeared in front of the cabin and sat down in front of me, unafraid. I couldn't move. There weren't supposed to be wolves in Yosemite. Slowly but surely, more and more showed up behind this giant one. They were monstrous creatures, otherworldly, but still wolves. I slowly stood up and began to back away, but the alpha wolf growled. I jumped and ran inside as the wolves all lunged at the cabin, barking and growling and howling. I got on the radio to scream for help, but my co-worker just kept saying there are no wolves in Yosemite. I stayed in the house, hidden, crying until there was silence. The creatures had gone away on their own after what felt like hours. The next sound I heard as I sat in the fetal position on the floor was a car pulling up and my co-worker calling out for me. He came to the door and he let himself in. He found me on the floor, still in shock. No one believed me and they convinced me that the job was just not for me. But I know what I saw. I was working the night shift at Craters of the Moon National Monument and Preserve in Idaho. My post was the Lava Flow Campgrounds, which was usually quite popular. This was a quiet weekend in October of 2016, though, and I didn't have too many campers to keep up with. It was around 11 o'clock at night, and I had just finished making my rounds to all of the campgrounds and picnic areas. I was headed back to headquarters when I noticed headlights in one of the back parking areas. It looked like someone had left their lights on accidentally or they were camping illegally, so I decided to check it out. When I got there, there was no car, but there were fresh tire tracks that led from the road down into a small gully and then back to the road. In a hurry, it looked like. I was so confused that the light was gone and now there was no car. There had to have been. There were also footprints that went from the road down into the gully back up and around me. The tracks were large and they appeared to be bare feet with five toes and they were freshly placed over the tire tracks. They were also unusually large. After looking around for a few minutes, I determined that there was no one in the gully and no cars in the immediate area. I got in my truck and started patrolling the area looking for this mystery car with its lights still on, but I couldn't find anything. I looked everywhere, but I decided it wasn't worth disturbing the campers, 
and I ended up going back to the area where I saw the tracks. Perhaps that would be the only place I could find the answers. The tracks were now covered with fresher tracks, as if someone or something was just walking in a circle from the gully to the parking lot, like on patrol, but none of my co-workers had feet like that. It was very strange. And that's when I saw it. It was a large, bipedal creature with strange feet that looked like they were webbed. He was standing down in the gully, and I began to piece together that he must have scared someone off. He looked up at me, and I looked at him, as if we had some sort of an understanding. And then he turned his large, hairy body and big feet and walked off into the woods. The next morning, I checked with all of my rangers, and no one had seen or heard anything out of the ordinary. No one had left their lights on or parked in an unauthorized area. No one had seen any Bigfoot walking around, either. I reported it to my supervisor, but he didn't seem too interested in investigating it further, and he thought it was hysterical that I thought Bigfoot scared off some kids. He just said some kids probably snuck in there and partied all night and left without turning off their headlights, or that whoever I saw was part of their group. I knew what I saw, but I also knew that if I continued talking about it further, my supervisor would probably fire me for sounding insane. I did notice that after that night I never saw that thing again, but I also never dealt with any illegal campers or teenagers on my shift either. I was working as a park ranger in the summer of 2010 at Pine Island State Forest in northern Minnesota. Pine Island is the largest state forest in Minnesota, and that made me super excited about my job. My friends had always said it would be a scary job for a girl, but I had wanted to be a park ranger ever since Girl Scouts. I even loved working the night shift. One night I was working alone and had just finished my patrol around 10 o'clock at night. It was a hot night in July, so I decided to sit outside by the picnic area near the campground entrance and enjoy a cup of coffee. I had a long night ahead of me. While sitting there, I heard what sounded like people laughing in the distance. I looked up from my mug to see if anyone was out there and saw nothing but the silhouettes of trees against the moonlit sky. And then as quickly as it started, it stopped. Thinking little of it, I went back to finishing my coffee. I stood up to head into the office when I saw a large group of people walking towards the park entrance. There were at least 15 young men, all dressed in white. I was puzzled because it was well known that the park was closed to everyone who wasn't already camping. I stayed there as they got closer. I was starting to get a little nervous, but felt like it was just some college guys doing some frat boy thing. I asked them to stop and tell me where they were headed, but instead they just continued. I yelled for them to stop and that I was a park ranger. I drew my taser and told them they were trespassing and they needed to leave or I would have to use force. They continued walking, now smiling and laughing as they did. Unbeknownst to me, they were surrounding me while I was distracted by their initial approach. As one of them got close enough, he reached out and grabbed my arm with his hand. Instantly, I felt all of the energy being sucked out of me. My mind had been playing games with me, but suddenly I was following the group towards a clearing and in the clearing they stopped and began circling me, praying something out loud as they did. I was still not sure how I had gotten there. I was just standing there almost in a trance. And then one of them came forward with a cup and handed it to me. And I went to drink it when I suddenly realized, this is not good. I'm in danger. I had no idea how I'd let them get me that far from the office, but I panicked and I threw the cup in the man's face. Whatever was in it was bright red. I shrieked, and I ran back up the hill towards the office, breaking the circle. They laughed as I ran, but I had to get to the office and call someone. When I called my backup and explained what happened, I was instantly laughed at and then reprimanded for letting people on the campsite. I sat outside with a baseball bat, waiting for my partner to show up, and saw no one coming back up the walkway towards me. Thank goodness. Surely they would be caught, and we would have to call the police. When my partner showed up and we ran down to where they had circled me, there was no one there. Not a soul in any direction. And it looked like no one had been there at all. I tried to explain that there was no way that they could have slipped by me. No other way out but right past me. 
After that night, I never saw that group again, but there were stories about missing teenagers from a neighboring town and a cult that made me wonder. I was working as a park ranger in the Shenandoah National Park in Virginia. I was on night patrol and an October evening in 1998, and I had just pulled up to one of the back roads that led into the park. One of the campers called in and reported hearing a scream, but I was used to that. Campers got spooked all the time, and by anything. I was about to turn onto another road when I saw something strange out of my rearview mirror. Across this large field where people often walk their dogs and ride horses or just go for a stroll, I noticed some strange movement. At this time of night, it was usually empty, even though it's home to many deer, rabbits, and other wildlife. But this thing seemed like a human, being as how tall it was in the brush. I stopped the car to investigate. Normally, I don't like to do that without a partner, but I decided I had to be sure that the surrounding campers were safe. Whoever was out there began moving very quickly from tree to tree, as if it were chasing something or being chased itself. The movement was so fast that at first I thought it might be a dog chasing another dog or even two people running really fast through the trees. But then I realized that no human could move that quickly from tree to tree without falling over or losing balance. And it dawned on me that it had started moving like that when I stopped my car, whenever it had become aware of me. And then it stopped moving and stood still between two trees. It was a pale, glowing figure with a face. I could only make out that it looked male and it wasn't smiling. It stood there staring towards my car without moving for what felt like forever. But then as a smile did appear on its face, it disappeared. That made me terrified. As terrified as I was, I thought I should turn my car around and investigate further. I made a U-turn and drove slowly along the road towards the field. There was nothing out of the ordinary in the brush or the trees now that I came close. I looked where I had seen the pale figure standing in the trees, but there was nothing. When I got there, it was gone. I gave up in order to protect myself, and I drove off towards the station. I reported that there was nothing going on, and the rest of my shift was uneventful. Until that morning before dawn... Towards the end of that shift, I decided to drive down through some very thick woods to enter that field in a different way, just to see if I could catch someone out there. That's when something on the side of the road caught my eye. When I got out to look out over what it could be, it turned out to be a small pile of clothes, and next to it was an old rusty knife with dried blood. I reported what I saw to the other park rangers, but no one believed me about what had happened in the field prior or about finding the clothes and the knife, even. A few days later, true to what was reported by the camper, we found out that a woman had gotten lost in that area of the park, and when she finally found the ranger station, she had this wild story about being chased by a crazed, pale man with a knife. She said that before he could actually attack her, he disappeared. We would find out that years before, a man had hidden in the park to escape murder and he was never found. There was no way in all the years that had passed that he could still be alive. Could there? In 2015, I was exploring by myself at a place called High Gorge Falls in the Adirondacks. It's a pretty popular place in the summer, but I went in early December to see the ice forming on the falls. I found that to be more interesting and the stillness of the place made exploring and photographing things easier. There were only a few people there throughout the day, and I was never in one place with them for too long. It was one of those chilly days that seemed dark even with the sun shining. My aim was to head back through the forest to the picnic area by 3 o'clock to make sure I got some food in before the long drive back to the Hudson Valley. I reached the edge of the forest, ready to hike through, when I couldn't help but notice an overwhelming sense of dread. Chills crept up my spine. I felt like something was staring back at me from the forest. I pulled out my map to frantically find another way, but then thought to myself how silly I sounded. How could something be watching me? I told myself to just suck it up and continued through the forest. It would be faster than taking some nature trail all around. 
I tried to keep my eyes on the ground to just avoid any low-hanging branches and to keep my balance. I was about halfway through when I heard something snap to my right. Immediately I stopped and looked around but saw nothing. I started to move when I heard it again, this time to my left. I looked around again and saw nothing. Then I heard it to my right again, and then my left, and so on until the noise became faster. I noticed on my final turn that a small tree was swaying in the wind. I was thinking, good, now I have a natural cause to explain away these sounds. But then I heard it somewhere else, and a bush on the opposite side began shaking. I thought that it was more wind until a shadow began to rise behind that bush. I never imagined there was anything to the sound. I was scared to death. I froze. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It had to be a creature of some kind, hunched over, but still at least seven feet tall, with dark, matted hair. Bits of skin were sticking out of the fur, and it looked pale as a corpse underneath. It had a thin frame, too, almost like it was malnourished or it had been out very long. Its head was large and pointed. It had no hair on its face, only around its neck. I couldn't tell if it was male or female. The creature had these large, reddish eyes glowing down on me, but I'm not sure if it was looking through me or at me. It seemed to be looking at something else, actually. I'm not sure how long I stood there, but when I snapped back to reality, I ran as fast as I could through the forest, which was actually quite small. My escape felt never-ending. I heard the branches of trees snap and the sound of something running behind me the entire time. I didn't look back. I didn't want to see it again or fall and be at its mercy. I made it to the picnic area and sat down on a bench. There was no one else there. Even the concessions closed because the afternoon was growing cold. My heart was racing. I looked around, but it seemed like whatever it was disappeared into thin air, even though I had heard it before reaching the clearing. I sat there for a few minutes trying to catch my breath. I didn't want to go back through that forest ever again, or even to see the falls because I know the area around them was too woody. I just kept my eyes on the trees, expecting that thing to come out again, but there was nothing. I have no reason to believe it was a Sasquatch, but I've never seen anything like it. I've never been so scared in my life. I still don't know what it was, but I decided to start looking into Sasquatch after that. I've seen other supposed sightings in the Adirondacks, and I know I saw something. I just may never know exactly what its purpose was, or what it was. I was camping with a friend at a campground near Bluff Lake near our hometown of Clare, Michigan in about 2007. We were in our senior year of high school at the time, and it was a close-by campsite that we could celebrate our graduation together at. The moon was full that night, and the sky was clear, normal for a June evening. We had just gotten into our sleeping bags and were talking when I noticed the trees were very, very still, like they weren't moving or rustling at all. It was so quiet that I could hear my veins pump blood and my stomach growl, even though I had just eaten dinner. I told my friend that I felt something was going to happen, and it was going to be big. I didn't know what but I had very good intuition, so I was totally on high alert. And sure enough, that's when I heard it. An incredibly low, odd growl. It was so deep that it shook the ground. I actually felt it more than I heard it. It was coming from the woods to the left of us, about 25 feet away. I told my friend to be quiet because she was shaking and wouldn't stop sobbing and asking me what was going on. I told her to get her flashlight and get into her sleeping bag. If it approached and looked like it was going to hurt us, I told her to shine it right in his eyes and make a lot of noise. She did as I said, trying not to make any more noise. I could see something moving in the moonlight through the trees. It was huge. I had no frame of reference to compare it to, but it was bigger than a bear. And then it came into the clearing and it stopped. It was so tall that I couldn't see its head through low-hanging branches, but I didn't need to see its head. I could feel its eyes on me. They were like laser beams. I could feel them moving towards me. And then its scrunched up humanoid face came out into the clearing of our campsite and it stared down at me. It was sniffing and moving around, but never taking its eyes off of me. I watched as it was coming closer. I thought for sure it was going to kill us. The smell was horrible too. 
It smelled like rotten meat. It got closer still, its hot breath on me. I thought I was going to pass out. I could feel my heart beating in my ears. Literally, Bigfoot was standing over me as my friend quietly sobbed and shook in the sleeping bag behind me. And that's when the creature stopped suddenly and turned its attention to my backpack. It began sniffing it and pulling at the straps, trying to open it. I could feel it. It was trying to go through my stuff. I watched as it opened the bag, and instead of taking anything from it, the creature just opened it wider with two long fingers and peered inside. It sniffed around then, as if it was trying to make sure there was no food in there. And then as suddenly as it appeared, it began walking away. My friend was sobbing louder now as it disappeared into the trees, and I was able to take a deep breath finally after holding it for the entire encounter. I'll never forget that night, but no one ever believed my friend or myself. Sometimes when I return on camping trips, I leave out some scraps from dinner, hoping that it's nearby, and it will come to get something to eat and I can see it again. I was about eight years old when I saw something that absolutely changed my life. It was winter of 2002, and I was with my parents and my younger brother on a family vacation to a cabin in the woods. It was a cabin that was owned by my grandparents on the border of Colorado National Park, and we were all staying inside the cabin because it was cold outside. The cabin had one large room with a wood-burning stove in the middle and a small kitchen area off to the side that had a table and chairs. There were two doors, one on each side of the cabin. One door led to the porch and the other to the yard. My parents and brother were inside the cabin all bundled up, so I decided to volunteer to run out and grab a few pieces of firewood for my dad. I liked to be the adventurous type, whereas my brother liked to stay close to my mom. It was later at night, so it also made me feel older and more trusted to be the one outside gathering the firewood. I even stopped in front of the wood pile to gaze up at the stars, taking my time before I had to go back in and huddle up with everybody else. I wasn't feeling very scared because I knew my parents and brother were inside. I actually wasn't afraid of much at that age. But suddenly I saw the shadow of a large figure walk across the front of the cabin's property which was lined with underbrush, and that caused the fear to really well up. The creature continued around the back of the cabin and out of my sight, but I could hear its gigantic footprints crunching through the snow. I was afraid to move or breathe. I could tell it was trying to not make more noise than necessary as it crept around, which made me worried about my family inside. They had no idea what might be watching them. The thought of that creeped me out even as a kid, and I felt an obligation to run in and warn them. I knew I couldn't be there to see the creature come back around. That would have been a really bad idea. So I decided to run back inside the house. I threw the wood into the air and turned to run, but I crashed right into the rotten smelling fur filled with twigs and burrs. I looked up at what had to be a giant and then down to its feet that were hairy and enormous. I looked up again and made eye contact with its small beady black eyes. It looked at me for a few seconds, making a small groaning noise, and then it turned and walked away without even laying a finger on me, almost like it was just checking in. I was very confused and scared as to why it didn't try to hurt me or where it had come from, where it was going. I ran into the cabin and told my parents and brother what I had seen, but my parents told me it was probably a deer or somebody's dog, and they told me just to calm down. My dad even got upset when he realized that I hadn't brought back any wood. However, I knew what I saw was not a deer or a dog. It was tall, it had long hair all over its body, and it walked on two legs. I saw it clearly. It was not dark, it wasn't cloudy outside. I never forgot that day, and over the years I've tried to find out what it was, what I saw. We always went back to the cabin every summer with my grandparents or during the fall with our dad to learn scouting, but I would always look for signs of that Bigfoot. It's the only reason I ever wanted to go back there again in the first place, but I never did see it again. I was awakened by a very loud and unusual noise that was unlike anything I've ever heard before. It was a long, loud, and very deep roar that lasted for about a minute or so. 
It was very deep, guttural, very loud. I could feel the vibration of the sound through our RV, and we had parked in the Snake River RV Park in Idaho Falls. It was our wedding anniversary, June 12th of 2019. My husband was sleeping and didn't hear it himself, though I don't understand how anyone could sleep through it. When it happened a second time, I became so frightened it was time to wake him up. He didn't hear it that time either, and he wiped his eyes awake as he tried to be there for me. He offered to go out on the porch to see if he could hear anything, but I talked him out of it. I could hear dogs in the park start barking, and they were frantic. I could hear the few neighboring RVs awaken with sounds of people mumbling and wondering where the sound was coming from. I grabbed on my husband's arm as the roar sounded a third time. This time he heard it, and so did everyone else in the park. There were only about ten of us scattered throughout the area, but people already began taking off and leaving us, and maybe one other camper parked there. Slowly we came to be alone, and whatever was making that noise was there too. My husband was a brave man, and against my wishes he decided he could go outside and walk around the RV to see if he could see anything or hear anything. Through the window he shouted to me that it was silent out there. Any remaining RVs must have stayed hidden with their lights off. Also, it had been raining earlier in the evening, but the night sky was clear, and there was a good portion of the moon shining over us. In the light of the moon, with the drops of water glistening, he could see no disturbance and hear no other noises. So he came back inside, we turned out our lights, and hid under a blanket, googling what could have made that sound. I googled lion sounds and listened to several distinct kinds of roars, including a mountain lion recorded in California. I tried to keep my phone at a low volume while exploring these ideas, but after the last recording, the roar from outside happened again, and this time it was as if it was right in front of our RV. And then the RV began to shake. My husband's eyes grew wide. Whatever it was, was climbing onto our RV. My husband bolted outside again, this time with a bat, to see what was climbing on our vehicle. The hair stood up on his neck as he realized what was out there. And he didn't stay long. He came right back inside, shaking his head no, telling me it couldn't be, but with no other explanation. As the RV shook, I kept begging him to give me a name or something, but he was in such shock. He pulled me into the small bathroom of the RV and shut the door. A few minutes later, we felt the shaking go more violent, as if the creature were right above us. The tiny bathroom skylight was blacked out by giant tufts of fur, we held each other and shut our eyes until the shaking stopped. After a few minutes, there was silence. My husband slowly led us out of the bathroom and headed to the door. He snuck out to investigate and saw that our RV had massive foot dents in it. We left incredibly early after that, before sunrise. Neither of us felt safe there anymore with whatever remained out there lurking near our RV. We left without ever naming whatever made those sounds or roars, but I honestly know, I feel, that we experienced a Bigfoot, at least judging from my husband's explanation. I never understood why he chose our RV or if he had tried to explore someone else's that night. All I knew was that he was not afraid to get close to us, which was terrifying. From then on, we picked a different RV park for every future trip. I was an Instagram influencer when it first became popular. By 2015, I had a ton of followers who loved my true crime stories. I decided to kick it up a notch once with some stories about mythical creatures and cryptozoology. I wanted to gain more of a presence and maybe even see myself get more sponsors on my channel. I planned out a trip to Big Bend National Park in my home state of Texas and rented out a campsite in early 2015 with a friend. Our plan was to catch Bigfoot on film. We had a costume for my friend to wear and cameras were ready. All we had to do was wait for night. That night, I noticed a young couple setting up their tent about 30 yards away from us. We had no intention of scaring them, but if we captured something on film where someone was actually scared, people would probably believe the video more. The night went by without much of anything happening. The couple eventually fell asleep in their tent and we were about to head over, my friend in full Sasquatch gear, when something caught my eye. 
I heard what sounded like branches snapping in the distance as we exited our tent. My friend pulled the furry mask off and asked me if we should be worried about mountain lions. I told her no, that they wouldn't come near people unless provoked. And then the snapping was followed by a guttural moan that made my hair on my arms stand up. My friend and I looked at each other with wide eyes. I fumbled around for my phone to turn the camera on as my friend huddled behind me in the tent, refusing to put the mask back on. I started recording and tried to coax her out in the costume to see if she would attract anything. The noise happened again, and instead she dove inside the tent. I was too curious and hungry for popularity to care. I started filming the bushes in front of our campsite, hoping that they would start moving again. Sure enough, they did, swaying back and forth as if something big was stuck in their tiny prickly branches. I narrated what was happening on the video, half expecting to disappoint fans when a lion or coyote walked out of the bushes. But instead, a giant shadow suddenly pulled itself free of the bushes and headed in my direction. In the moonlight, there was no mistaking it. It had long brown fur covered in twigs and filth. The smell was something I had never smelled before, pungent, rotting, like roadkill that had been left out in the sun. The creature noticed me and continued towards me. It was massive, towering high above my five foot three stature. I couldn't take my eyes off of its massive long arms with claw-like hands at the end of them. Its mouth was open in a snarl that revealed sharp teeth. It let out another moan and I dropped the phone to run for it, hoping it would chase me instead of my friend who was still hiding in the tent. I ran straight for the couple's tent, screaming for help for both me and my friend. The boyfriend stepped out to take a look over towards our tent, but by the time he looked, the creature was gone. The couple offered to walk me back to my tent, check on my friend, who luckily was safe and sound, laying on the ground, though, in the middle of a giant footprint with fur stuck to it was my phone cracked into pieces. All the footage I had just taken was gone. The next morning, we all departed, even the couple who were now spooked. I never tried to fake any sort of video ever again. I would never tell the story to anyone again either, but I stopped focusing on true crime, and I began presenting research on strange and unseen creatures through my vlog. It was a hot summer day in July of 2000. I was living in New York at the time, just north of Albany. This was the year right before my family moved to Pennsylvania. I was 16 and my cousin was 18. And that day she, her boyfriend and I were heading to a lake near her house to swim. So after lunch, we got in her car to start heading there. It was about a 45 minute drive from her house to the lake. Neither of us had been there before and she wanted to show it to us. The whole way there, we were talking about what we were going to do when we got there. We girls just wanted to relax, and my cousin's boyfriend wanted to fish, so we decided we would head to an area that had both. When we finally arrived at the lake, it was around 2 o'clock. We pulled up next to the picnic area that was along the water and got out of the car. My cousin's boyfriend grabbed his fishing gear and headed down towards the area where people put their boats in the water, but at the time no one else was out there, not even another car in the parking lot. He had brought his dog with him, too, just to keep him company while we walked in the water and sunbathed and basically just hung out nearby. We sat there on the rocky shore for a while, taking it all in, and it started to get hot, so we decided to walk back up towards where he was fishing. We walked up to where he was, sat down next to him. We were talking for a while when he said he had been having this funny feeling that someone was watching us ever since we arrived. We all looked around, but none of us saw anything strange, so we just continued talking about random stuff and looking out over the water, watching to see if he got a bite. And then all of a sudden, from behind us, we heard this really loud screeching sound that sounded like a man screaming, but it was so high-pitched, and it went on for about five seconds and then stopped abruptly. It scared the crap out of all three of us because no one else was around except people in boats way out on the lake. 
My cousin's boyfriend said that maybe it was an animal that had just been unlucky prey, making that noise, so he grabbed his binoculars to see if he could see what it was. He scanned the area where the sound came from but couldn't see anything because there are trees and bushes in that area, and he couldn't see inside them. After we all looked around for a few minutes trying to figure out what made that noise, my cousin's boyfriend decided to go fish over by where the noise might be coming from to try to figure out what it was. I was really scared at this point because whatever it was sounded big and like it could easily have hurt us if it wanted to. My cousin's boyfriend walked over to an area closer to the noise and sat down on the bank and started fishing. After a few minutes, we heard a loud noise again and it sounded like two trees snapping together, but much louder and deeper. We looked in the direction and saw the bushes and trees moving like something big was coming through them. And then out from the bushes came this giant, ape-like creature. It had to be at least ten feet tall, and it was covered in hair that was dark reddish-brown. It had a long snout, big teeth. It looked like a cross between an ape and a bear, and it was coming straight at us. We were all so scared that we just sat there frozen in fear, watching it come closer and closer. And when it got close enough that we could see its eyes clearly, they were a bright yellow and they looked almost human-like. It stopped about 20 feet away from us, just standing there looking at us. We were all so scared we couldn't move. We just sat there staring at it, not knowing what to do. And then it started making this really strange grunting noise and took a step towards us. My cousin's boyfriend was the first to snap out of it, and he yelled at us to run. We looked at each other. We bailed. We ran back to the car where we jumped in and took off. We drove back to the main road and didn't stop until we got to the gas station. And then we all just sat there, kind of not knowing what to do or what to say. We were all really freaked out, and no one wanted to go back to investigate because we were all so scared. Eventually, my cousin's boyfriend said that maybe we should just go home and forget all about it, because there was nothing we could do anyway. We agreed and started heading home. On the way home, we didn't talk much. We were all still in shock, and from that day onward, we barely mentioned it at all. It was like we didn't have the words to describe our feelings or what we saw. And even when we did talk, it was only to each other. We couldn't bear to share it with anybody else. The next encounter was submitted by a homeowner in Dutchess County, New York, and took place in April of 2010. I was hiking through the woods on my private land, which is located in the Hudson Valley area of Dutchess County, New York. It was late April, about 2010, and I remember that I needed a sweater because the evening air was still chilly. I was following a creek bed which led to a large rock outcropping. My usual route went out on my own. I had stopped at this place many times to meditate, and my children used to love climbing it when they were very small. But I noticed some strange things as I was walking up the hill towards it. First, I smelled a foul odor, like the smell of death. I looked around on the ground for any sort of deceased animal but saw nothing. The path was clear and there were no insects buzzing anywhere. I continued up through the stench and spotted a tree that had been chopped down into smaller pieces. I definitely was not okay with any trees being cut down on my land, so now I was becoming angry that someone had been trespassing. The anger turned to concern when I saw that the pieces were placed all around the outcropping in a very peculiar manner, like there was some meaning behind it. I also saw that some of the pieces of wood had been burned on one of the rocks that jutted out from the formation, and there was something in the middle of the burned pieces that I was afraid to look at, but I had a sneaking suspicion it was once alive. There was also a large rock that had been moved from its original position. I inched closer to get a better look at the rocks when I heard some snapping in the bushes behind me. I stopped as I listened to the laughter of what sounded like teenagers in the woods. I called out for them to show themselves, and the noise stopped. Everything went silent. Soon after, I made out that it was a bird in the center of the burned wood, a rather large one. 
Also, round the wood, written in some red substances, were weird symbols that I had never seen before. And then, a voice came from out of the woods yelling for me to leave that place. I yelled back that it was my home and that I would be calling the police. Before I knew it, several people dressed in black came running down the hill at me screaming. One of them was holding a knife. I was scared out of my mind. I ran all the way back to my house without turning back and I locked the doors. As I called the police, there was suddenly a loud bang on my front window. I peeled back the curtain a few inches to see that one of the people in black was pressed against my window. Their face was covered, but it was the person with the knife. And it was red and rusty. I screamed and threw the phone just as I was giving the address. I watched from the window as the group turned around and walked back the way they came, meaning they were all still out there. The police came and investigated my land. We searched the area but found nothing. I took them up to the outcropping and everything was gone, completely cleaned up. Even the weird symbols had been washed away. The cops told me that I had a wild imagination now that I was living with empty nest syndrome. I assured them that missing my own adult children had nothing to do with what I saw, but they had no evidence except my words, and they didn't believe me. The stench had not fully dissipated, but the cops even chalked that smell up to some animal dying somewhere on the property. Blame nature, they told me, as they escorted me back to my house. I didn't sleep that night. Knowing that a group like that could break onto my property and conduct horrible things was too much for me to bear. I wasted no time. I put the house on the market soon and moved to my daughter's house, where I worked out my next move. I would never go back to that outcropping again, let alone the house or the property. And interestingly, I spent a lot of time going back to church. Our next story involves a park ranger at the Superior National Forest in Minnesota in November of 2015. I was out on my rounds one late evening in the fall at Superior National Forest in Minnesota. We were a stone's throw from Canada and steeped in Native American legend and culture. I loved being there my first few weeks, even though I had started in one of the warmest autumns on record. It was still getting darker earlier now, though, and back in 2015, I was only a rookie ranger, so I didn't want to get lost. I didn't know my way around like the others, and on this particular night, the temperature was warm, and I had to watch out for the campers who were visiting. I decided to head back to the station earlier than I was supposed to just because everything I had checked out seemed fine, at least on the surface. People were actually outside enjoying themselves. So being a newbie and not really knowing my way around, somewhere along my way back, I took a right instead of a left. I continued driving instead of stopping and turning around, though, telling myself I would run into some sort of a roundabout to get myself turned around. I could get myself back to the fork, I thought, but soon I was beginning to roll over rocks. There was no way around as the road got more and more narrow until it finally ended and became dirt. I was now in the middle of the woods, and I couldn't see anything at first except for what was in front of my headlights. I began to panic. I didn't know where I was, and it was getting darker and darker by the second. I pulled over to the side and tried to get a hold of myself as I tried to think of a plan. I decided to get out my map and try and figure out where I was exactly. I shined my phone down on it, but the lighting was terrible. I was about to give up and radio for backup when I saw something out of the corner of my eye. There was a small clearing just off the road, but it was pitch black and I couldn't see anything but what looked like a small light or a flame. It was floating there in the darkness. At first I reminded myself that the forest was just a little bit busier than usual, but I really didn't recognize this place where the road just stopped. My curiosity got the best of me and I slowly exited my patrol car to check it out. The only weapon I had at the time was a hunting knife, so I kept my hand close to it as I began pushing through the pitch black brush towards the light. When I realized I was at the edge of the clearing, I stopped and I watched, squinting to see into the dark for any kind of movement, anything at all. 
Eventually my eyes adjusted and I could make out several people standing there. They were very underdressed and their skin appeared to glow as they stood beside the floating flame. I could make out the people doing hand gestures and the light in the middle would get brighter and brighter. I turned around to check for my car's headlights to be sure I could get away from there quickly. And then when I took one more look back towards the clearing, it was empty. No light, no people. I was freaked out. Then there was rustling in the bushes beside me and out popped a small child in a robe-like outfit. And she was smiling up at me. She had long, blonde hair and held her skinny finger to her lips and whispered, shh, before disappearing back into the woods. And now, up ahead, I could now make out a group of people walking away in the moonlight. I always say to each their own, but I have no idea what I was interrupting that night. And from that day forward, I begged to be put on morning patrol only. I didn't want to know what else was hiding in the dark of that forest at night, or who was calling it out. It was the summer of 2009, and my girlfriend and I were on our yearly camping trip with her mom and dad. Her brother and his wife were there too this year. The six of us had traveled north from where we lived near Albany, New York, to a campground in the Adirondack Mountains. It was a small campground, but they did have full cabins there, as well as sites for both RVs and tents. My girlfriend's parents rented one of the cabins for a week, and we planned to set up a tent for ourselves just outside of it. The cabin itself had two bedrooms and an open living area with a kitchenette. We had left after work on a Friday. We ate dinner when we got there, hung out by the fire pit, and the six of us talked about all sorts of things and made s'mores. It was a great first night. We were all tired, though, so we headed to bed at about 9.30, We'd been up since 5 a.m. that morning, having worked a full day, so we were all pretty tired. The moon was full, so there was plenty of light around, but not enough details to see beyond 20 feet or so. I pitched our tent relatively close to the cabin because of that. My girlfriend's brother and his wife pitched their tent on the far side of the cabin, about 50 feet away. And about an hour later, I was awoken by my girlfriend, who had said she heard something outside our tent but couldn't see anything out the window because it got so dark. She thought it sounded like heavy footsteps walking through leaves and twigs as it moved around our site. We were near the center of the campground where there weren't too many trees. I listened a bit, but could barely lift my head. I was so tired. Also, I didn't hear anything, so I told her not to worry and that whatever it was would probably move on soon. It was probably just some forest animal checking out our scents. I instantly went back to sleep, but I woke up again when she nudged me awake a few minutes later, saying that whatever it was had moved closer. She said she could hear breathing outside the tent, and felt like something was looking at her through the mesh window on the door. I reluctantly gave in and woke myself up to check out what might be going on. I told her not to move, and I slowly unzipped the door of our tent. As soon as I did, my girlfriend let out a scream because something jumped from the area right outside our door and jumped into the trees right across from the tent. We both saw it at the same time very quickly before it darted behind the trees and then stopped and looked back at us. It was about seven feet tall, muscular, had a large head with long hair. The creature didn't seem aggressive, but instead seemed curious as it stood there staring at us for what felt like a long time. It had yellow eyes that almost glowed in the dark, and I feel I saw a mouth with sharp teeth. After standing there for a few seconds, it turned and slowly walked away into the woods on the other side of the campground. I then unzipped the tent door all the way and stepped outside very cautiously. I looked in the direction that it had gone, but I couldn't see anything in the dark, so I stood there a bit listening before I went back inside the tent and zipped it up. I was now doubting if we had really seen anything at all, but at the same time, we both just laid there in our sleeping bags for several minutes, not saying anything and barely breathing. We were both in shock at what had just happened. We stayed awake for probably the next two hours, and we did both hear distant screaming noises a few times that night. But somehow we both finally fell asleep, 
although I have to admit I had dreams of being chased and running for my life through the forest that night. The next day, when we all got up and were making breakfast, I told my girlfriend's brother about what happened. I asked him if he had heard or seen anything at all, but he said he hadn't, so it was looking as if only my girlfriend and I had experienced it, if it even was something. But later that day, after a morning hike, we were sitting in the cabin with her mom and dad when one of the campground managers came by with his dog. The dog looked like a German shepherd mix. The dog was acting very strangely, as if he had spotted or smelled something unusual in the area and was trying to pull his owner towards it. The manager passed the time a bit, talking to us, checking in on us, before finally asking if we had seen anything like a bear around recently, saying that his dog seemed to be very interested in our area specifically. He was wondering what could possibly be up. When we told him no, he seemed relieved, but said that he had received a report from other campers. They said they had seen a large black bear in the area and that it was smart enough to have learned how to open up their locked food storage containers. I don't know if what we saw was a bear or not, but I do know that bears don't usually stand seven feet tall or walk on their back legs. Also, I'm pretty sure bears are nocturnal, so there's that. So what exactly did we see that night? I'm not sure but it was definitely something very strange and out of the ordinary. And my wife and I are confident that it wasn't just a black bear, but something much more. And the fact that other campers had reported seeing something similar in the area lends credibility to our story. Have you ever had a similar encounter while camping, hiking, anything? Or do you know of anyone who has? If so, please share your story in the comments below. Hearing from other people who feel the same as we do has been helping us keep our sanity. Two of my friends and I were headed to Grafton Lake State Park in New York on a Sunday evening in the summer of 2005. We were on summer break from college and were going to camp that night nearby and head into the park and over to the lake in the morning. We were trying to get there in enough time to set up camp before it got too dark. I remember it was around 5 o'clock at night. We had the windows down and were enjoying the scenery as well as celebrating the end of the day since we had all worked that day at our respective summer jobs. All of a sudden, my friend sitting in the back seat yells behind me, What was that? I looked at him and he had his head tilted out the window, staring out into the woods and pointing. I looked out my window in the direction he was pointing and I saw this large bipedal creature running through the woods, its image flashing in my mind as it ran and flickered behind the trees. It was hard to tell exactly how far away it was because the thing seemed huge. I would put it at about seven feet or more and about 50 yards or so away. One thing about it that really confused me was the way it ran. It was very odd. It seemed to be running on two legs, but its arms were swinging back and forth like the way a human would run, and its head was bobbing up and down as it ran, which made me think that maybe it was chasing something and trying to keep its eye on some kind of prey. I had never seen anything like this before, so my mind started racing with all of the possible explanations of what I could have been looking at. We sat there staring out the window for about ten seconds or so, trying to make sense of what we had just seen when suddenly from behind us came this loud bang and it shook the entire car. My friend who was driving slammed on the brakes and we all turned around to see that the back window of the car was shattered. But there was no reason for that to have happened. We weren't near anything that could have caused it to break. No falling trees or flying rocks and there was no wind outside. I remember being terrified and thinking how weird it was that we simultaneously were looking at this strange animal, and at the same time our back window basically explodes. I looked again into the trees, but super scared of actually seeing anything again. But it was gone. Worse yet, I kept thinking about how the sun was starting to go down, and we knew that it would get dark very quickly after that. My friends and I were totally unable to make sense of what was happening, so we decided to just drive up a little further before we checked anything out. 
in case whatever we had been looking at came back out again. We definitely did not want that to happen. We drove maybe another quarter of a mile up the road before pulling over to the side and getting out of the car and assessing the damage. The back window was completely shattered, but there were no pieces of glass inside the car because the window was still sort of intact. I guess that's a safety thing on cars. Looking at the windshield all cracked like that, it was a big awakening to us, even though I think we probably had it in our minds that we could originally continue on to the campsite we unanimously decided that it was best if we just drove back home and forgot about the whole overnight thing. So we turned the car around in the middle of the road and headed back down towards where everything had taken place. We had no choice but to go back that way if we wanted to go home, unfortunately. So then as soon as we got back to the area where we saw the creature, my friend yelled, There it is! I squinted and looked up ahead of us into the trees, but there was this huge rock on the side of the road. I originally thought that he had meant he had seen the creature again and was yelling about that. But he said, no, look at the rock. That's what hit us. We stopped the car to look at it. The rock was huge. No one could have ever lifted that thing that I knew of and thrown it the way it came at us. We all just looked at each other in disbelief, but quickly continued driving away. We didn't say much to each other after that. We were all in shock. Honestly, the rock looked like it could have weighed a hundred pounds and it would have had to have been hurled from quite a distance. So thinking about the thing that we had just seen moments earlier made me believe that whatever it was was stronger than I wanted to think. I mean, to be able to pick up that rock and throw it at our car? As I was thinking about all of that, suddenly to our right, something in the woods caught our attention and we all yelled. We were definitely on edge. We quickly turned our heads in the direction to see what it was but we were sure to keep the car going this time. And again, we saw the huge creature, and it appeared to be bipedal and running on two legs, just like the first time. But this time it was darker outside, and we could now see large, glowing eyes. And again, its arms were swinging back and forth as it ran. Obviously, we had never seen anything like this before this day, and now twice. So our minds were racing with the possible explanations... Our brains were trying to make logical sense out of all of it. But whatever it was had already disappeared back into the woods again. This time, there was no doubt in anyone's mind that whatever we had seen both of these times was definitely not human. There was no stopping us from going home now. We drove as fast as we could down the road. We didn't want to be near those woods at all. And I'm pretty sure that whatever was in there obviously did not want us there or anywhere in the area. As we drove away, I couldn't help but wonder what else might be out there in those woods waiting to be discovered, or if there were more than one of what we saw. Because thinking of how that rock came at us from behind, I sort of think there was more than one. When we got home, we didn't tell our parents or anyone else what had happened. I personally was scared and didn't want to be made fun of or ridiculed by anyone. But I still think about that day. I think about it often, and I wonder. I've never seen anything like it since, thank goodness. But I can say with 100% conviction that whatever it was was definitely not a human figure. Do you think that there are creatures like this? Like this one, waiting to be discovered? What do you think this creature was? Please let me know so I can get some rest. This experience happened while I was hiking through Yellowstone National Park, something I've done every year for the past 11 years since moving out to Colorado. I love the peace and quiet of being in nature, and this place was my favorite summer trip. This time was different, though. I had an experience that I'm still not sure what really happened. It was August of 2018, and I was hiking by myself. I had just finished up a long day on the trail and was heading back to my campsite. The return was taking me through a dense forest when I suddenly felt this strange sensation of energy, like an electric current or something. The best way to describe it is that the air felt heavy, like it was hard to move. I paused for a bit, but eventually continued walking even though it became harder and harder to move my legs, one in front of the other. 
I struggled along a few feet more until I then felt something grab onto me from behind. Now it felt like someone had their hands around my waist and was trying to pull me backwards. The sheer force of it was so strong that I couldn't move or break away. I tried to wiggle my body away and scream, but nothing worked. I was paralyzed with fear. I tried to swing my body around to see who or what it was, but I still couldn't move. I was able to swing my head back, though, but was shocked to see that nothing was there. And then in a blink of an eye, I was moving, but not under my own power. It felt like I was being pulled through the air. The sensation was so strange and disorienting that I lost all sense of up and down. I could see the forest around me whizzing by, but it all happened so fast. And in the next instant, I was released, and I fell to the ground. I laid there for a few moments trying to catch my breath and make sense of what had just happened. When I finally sat up, I looked around and saw that I was in a completely different part of the forest. I must have been transported at an incredibly high speed, because there was no way I could have walked to this spot in the short time I had been hiking. I got up and tried to orient myself, but I quickly realized that I had no idea where I was. I couldn't find any landmarks that looked familiar, and my phone had no service. I was completely lost. I wandered around a bit trying to find something, anything that I could recognize, but it soon became too dark and I gave up. I ended up spending that night in the forest, making a bed of leaves and leaning some sticks up against a big rock to make a makeshift shelter. As soon as the sun started to rise, I was up and followed the direction of the sunrise to get myself oriented. During my search for my campsite, I couldn't think of anything else but getting myself back. It was all I could concentrate on. I didn't even have the energy at that point to spend on being scared. Later, though, I would think about how I was probably one of the lucky ones, one of the ones who got away, someone who broke free from an energy field, and I don't even know how I did it or what it was. Eventually, I finally found my way back to my campsite and was able to sit down and think about what had happened, but there was nothing I could come up with that made any sense. The experience didn't match anything I had ever heard or read about, was I abducted by aliens, pulled through some kind of portal, or did I just imagine the whole thing? I guess I'll never really know. However, it really makes me think that there are things out there that we can't explain, things beyond our understanding. And that's pretty amazing to me that things like that exist. I still like to hike, but I haven't been back to Yellowstone since that day. Maybe one day I'll go back and see if I can find that spot again and put some closure to the experience. But for now, I'm content to just remember the experience and try to make whatever sense of it I can. I was working as a park ranger in Redwood National Park in Northern California when this happened on a beautiful sunny day in May of 2017. The park was not very busy that day, and there were only about a dozen people at the visitor center when this family came walking in with their young son. They told me that they had just seen this strange creature while walking the Ladybird Johnson Grove Trail, and they were scared enough that they wanted to report it. I asked them what it was, and the father said he didn't know, but it looked like a big dog or a wolf and it ran from him faster than he'd ever seen anything move and then disappeared into the trees. I thought, okay, maybe someone's pet got loose or something. So I made a call out to see if anyone had reported a missing animal of any kind recently. No one had, so I told this man that we'd keep an eye out for it if he wanted to leave his name and number to get any updates. He did, and then left with his family. I watched them get in their car and drive off, I'm not sure where they were headed, but I really didn't expect to have to talk to them again. And then about ten minutes later, another man came in and said he had just seen a big black bear walking strangely, and he described having seen it in the same area as the first family. 
I asked him if he was sure that it was a bear because someone else had reported seeing something strange there earlier. He said yes, it looked like a bear. But he said it was weird because it ran on two legs instead of four. So I told him what the first guy had seen and asked him if it was similar to that. He described exactly what the first family had seen except that he said the animal was a bear versus a dog or a wolf. He said the animal was all black with no other colors, no white around the eyes or the muzzle. However, this guy also said it looked like it had been burned or something weird because its fur was singed around the edges. I thanked him for the information and he left. So now I had two reports of something really strange in basically the same area and I was starting to get a little worried. I decided to head over and check it out myself. I headed out to the Ladybird Johnson Trail and didn't see anything when I first got there. But after wandering around a bit and looking for anything out of place, I heard something in the bushes. I slowly approached, and whatever it was must have heard me coming because it ran out of the bushes and took off into the woods, but not before I got a good look at it. It was this big, black, hairy creature that to me did look like a cross between a dog and a wolf, and a bear. It also had singed fur around its face and body, and it was definitely not acting like any animal I had ever seen, because it was running on two legs instead of four, just like that guy said. I called out to it a few times, but it just kept running until it was out of sight, and I knew instantly that this was the thing that the others had seen. I followed it for a while and then lost sight of it. I couldn't believe what I'd just seen, and I had no idea what to do next. I didn't know if anyone would take seriously my description of the thing. But I did go back to the visitor center and report what I had seen. Needless to say, we closed the area down until we could figure out what was going on. Thank goodness they at least believed me that much, to at least check things out and keep the place safe. Rangers were sent to the area to try and find the creature, but after a full day of searching, they never found anything. We eventually reopened the area to the public, but we were never able to figure out what that thing was that people saw that day. It remains one of the strangest things that has ever happened to me in all my years as a park ranger. It was the winter of 1983, and my wife and I had just moved to a small community in western Ohio called West Liberty, about an hour or so west of Columbus. I remember the day well. It was about 6 p.m. on a cold, dark winter day when we decided to go for a brisk walk down by the Mad River that ran through town. We were both in our late 20s at the time and very much into nature so we enjoyed walking along the river bank as well as along the trails near town. This day, we walked for probably a mile or more until we got to an area where there were no houses or roads nearby. It was completely surrounded by woods with only the river flowing past us on one side. There's also an old railroad track bed that runs parallel to the river, too, maybe 50 yards away from it that's now used as a walking trail called the Simon Kenton Trail. Anyway, as we stood there looking out over the river, I noticed a large figure moving through the woods, maybe a hundred yards or so to our right. It was too far away for me to make out any specific details, but it appeared to be larger than a man. But it was walking upright on two legs, which is what made me think human. As I watched it move through the trees, it seemed to disappear into what looked like a small opening in the brush where an offshoot or maybe old railroad tracks ran through. I pointed it out to my wife, too, and said that I thought perhaps somebody had lost their dog. She agreed that it was probably just someone's lost dog, but the thing was, all I could think was that no dog would walk upright like that, or be that big. But it was the best conclusion I could come up with that made any sense. We decided this was all just too weird and started to head back home as it was getting late anyway, and it was also starting to get pretty dark due to it being winter time. So we started walking back towards town when all of a sudden we heard these crazy banging noises 
and quickly realized that the sound was coming from the direction that we had seen the thing go into the woods. There were no houses around for that kind of noise to be coming from, so we both looked at each other kind of funny and just walked quicker. As we got closer to where I thought whatever it was disappeared, I paid close attention to that small opening in the brush. Well, it was about eight feet wide, actually. The thing is, though, these tracks hadn't been used in years, and they were overgrown with weeds and had grass all through them, so you couldn't really see them unless you knew exactly where to look. They also crossed under an old bridge that went over the river, which meant that this opening would lead us right underneath that bridge. I told my wife then that I thought perhaps whatever made those noises may have been down in that track bed under the old bridge because there was nowhere else for anything to go, except maybe up into the trees where we had first seen the movement earlier. We stood there looking at each other, not really sure what to do, when all of a sudden we heard the same noise again coming from under the bridge this time. And this time it was louder and closer sounding like whatever it was really wanted to let us know it was there. At least, that's the way we interpreted it. Well, we got the message and immediately continued on and didn't follow the tracks to the bridge. I mean, obviously, we didn't have any idea what this thing could be, and my brain told me that it wasn't a dog or anything else normal. We basically sprinted the whole way home without incident, and we sat talking about what it could have been. We eventually also told our friends about what had happened that night, but no one had any answers for us, so we just kind of left it alone after that, figuring that maybe we were just exaggerating what we had seen due to being out in the cold and in the dark. But then a few nights later, when it was unusually warm, my wife and I decided to go out on our back porch swing, where we sat overlooking the yard while having some hot chocolate before going to bed. It's a covered, screened-in porch back there. It was probably close to 10 o'clock at night when we sat down on the swing, and then all of a sudden something ran through our backyard, making lots of noise and crashing through the brush and the trees that run next to the house. The thing is, there are no houses behind us, so whatever this thing was, it must have been coming from the woods across our street, which are a decent distance away. I got up to go look out the screen door on the porch that leads to the yard, and when I did, my wife yelled that she just saw something pass through our yard light. I'd noticed the flicker of the light, too, because whatever it was was so big it blocked out most of the light as it passed through it. She described what she saw as being like a huge, hairy man walking upright on two legs, but with very long arms swinging at its side while it moved through our yard. I followed my eyes to where she was pointing, but didn't see anything because it was too dark outside. But I could definitely hear whatever it was crashing through the brush and the trees. We looked at each other, locked the screen door, which we don't always do, and headed up to bed while checking that all the doors in the windows were locked. The next day, we went out. We found tracks in some soft dirt near where this all had happened, and they were definitely not human footprints although they resembled them somewhat except for one thing. There were no distinct toes, only long, sharp-looking imprints. I eventually showed these tracks to some of my friends who lived in the area, and they told me that they didn't know what this could be, but it sure wasn't anything they had ever seen before, and they made sure to say that we needed to be super careful. My wife and I quickly, then and there, made the decision to just stay inside our house after dark from then on, or at least only on the porch with the screen door locked, as we really didn't know what could be roaming out there. After these two sightings, or experiences, or whatever you want to call them, we never really heard or saw anything else after that. But I did notice some years later, when we were moving away from that house, that a lot of the local farmers had started using dogs to guard their livestock at night. I also noticed that around this same time, people in our old neighborhood began putting up fences and cameras all over their yards. To me, it looked like they were trying to keep something out. Whatever it was, it may be the thing we saw. I really wonder if it still is out there. Because since moving away, I haven't heard any other concrete reports coming from anywhere near that part of Ohio. Maybe someone else here who's listening has something similar that they've seen, though. If you do know of anything like this, 
in this area, please let me know so I can get more details on the updates. Thank you. This crazy story happened to me in 1995, back when I was about 16 years old. At the time, we lived in a small town in Idaho called Plummer. Plummer's about 30 miles south of Coeur d'Alene and about 10 miles east of the Washington state border. At the time, the town had a population of approximately 1,000 people, so it's not that big of a town, and there are plenty of farms around the area. My family owns a small farm outside of Plummer where we have cattle and horses. So I was taking care of my horse one evening in the barn with the barn door wide open when something caught my eye, something off in the distance. At first, I thought it was a coyote because they sometimes come to our property at night and try to get into our chicken coop and steal one of our chickens, if they can get away with it without getting shot by one of us before they make off with it. But this thing didn't look like a coyote I had ever seen before. It looked like it was on two legs most of the time, too, but it would drop to all fours every once in a while. It was walking in my direction, and I could tell that this thing was huge. I literally thought maybe it was some escaped circus animal or something, only because it just looked so weird to be anything else. But then my horse started getting scared as the thing got closer, so I knew that whatever it was, it wasn't good. I then turned off all the lights in the barn so this thing couldn't see me very well as it walked up towards our fence line to try and see it better. The only light came from the moon, which cast a glow over everything around me, including this creature. It stood there about ten minutes, sniffing around like a dog would do when it catches a scent it likes, or doesn't like. And then out of nowhere, my horse freaks out and starts rearing up on its back legs, I had to hold on to him as tight as I could so he wouldn't run off with me and possibly hurt me in the process. After a few minutes of this, the creature walked over in my direction and stood right near our fence line, but I don't think that it saw me. I think it just heard my horse. It sniffed around for another five or ten minutes before it started walking away, still on two legs most of the time, but every once in a while, dropping down on all fours, I didn't know what this thing was, but I knew for sure that I didn't want to be anywhere near it. So after about 20 minutes more of watching it wander all around the property, I quietly closed up the barn and slowly walked back to the house so as not to alert it. I went straight to my mom and dad's room and told them what happened. They listened without saying a word until I was done talking. And then they went on to tell me that there had recently been some weird things going on in the woods around the property lately. They said that they now thought it was important that we should all keep a gun or a rifle on us when taking care of the horses or being out of the house at all at night from then on. It was weird for me to see them being like this, really serious and extra cautious. Ever since then, I always make sure to carry protection with me whenever I'm out at night no matter what the reason is. Honestly, this thing freaks me out even thinking about it still. It was by far one of the strangest things I've ever seen in my life. No, make that the strangest thing by far. My guess is that it was probably eight feet tall, if not more, very muscular and had dark brown hair all over its body except for its face, which looked like a man's face without hair on it. That's a vision in my mind that has never wavered. It's totally stuck in my brain, even when I try to sleep. Like I said, I don't know what this thing was because I only really saw it in the moonlight, but I'm totally convinced it wasn't human. I mean, I've never seen a man that looked like that, at least not in Idaho, but I've never really been anywhere else, so I'm no expert on that. And it also wasn't a coyote either, in case any of you are thinking that. It was something sort of in between, if I can describe it like that. Like I said earlier, it looked like some sort of an escaped circus animal or something. It's hard to explain, but that's the best way I can think to describe it. I'm older now, but still trying to come to a definitive conclusion even after all these years. I hope you can understand what I'm trying to say and that you don't think bad about me.
I'm a 30-year-old man living just outside of Billings, Montana, and one weekend in February of 2003, during some particularly great weather, I decided to head out and take the drive over to Yellowstone to spend the weekend there. I planned to stay in Gardner, Montana, just above the north entrance, and have that be my home base. It was a pretty easy drive, considering how rural that part of the country is, and so the trip there was actually relaxing for me. The one thing I like about driving is that there is nothing else to concentrate on, and you can relax and just look at the road. Also, I was newly into photography at the time and was hoping to get some great images on the trip. And Yellowstone is a photographer's dream, full of incredible landscapes and wildlife. So I arrived at the park around midday and headed first to the geysers basins. The geysers were amazing to see, but what I really wanted to photograph were the conditions that created them. I spent a couple of hours there and then headed over to the mud volcano area. This is one of the more popular attractions in the park, and for good reason. It was incredible to see and smell the results of all that geothermal activity. I stayed there until just before sunset and then headed back up to Gardner. The next day I woke up early after a great sleep and headed out, planning on a hike, hoping for some more wildlife sightings. I wasn't disappointed either. The weather was perfect, so I saw bison, elk, deer, and even a black bear. Eventually I had worked up a good sweat by the time I got to the top of one of the trails, so I paused to take a breather and a drink of water before heading back down again. As I was sitting there, taking it all in, I saw movement down in the valley below me. At first it was pretty far off, but I could tell that whatever it was was huge. Naturally, I originally thought it was just another animal, but as it continued to walk and get closer to me and approached the bottom of the trail, I could see that it was much too big to be anything I knew or could identify. It was definitely hairy and dog-like, but much larger than any breed I could think of. Its black fur seemed thick, and it looked determined for some reason. I could also see that it had a long snout, and it walked in a funny manner. It sort of lumbered with its arms hanging down at its side and swung them when it walked, sort of like a human or an ape. I couldn't believe my eyes as I sat there rooted to the spot in fear as I watched it come closer and closer. I hopped back, crouched down. I thought for sure it would notice me, where I was now crouching behind the big rock, but it never flinched or paused. It just walked right by me, continuing on the trail. It was so close that I could honestly feel its hot breath on my skin as it passed, and the stench of it was so bad that I had to hold back from coughing. But it never touched me, looked at me, or even paused its gait. I still can't decide if it even knew I was there or not. I crouched there for what felt like forever before finally mustering up the courage to stand and move. I slowly backed away from the direction it went, all the while keeping an eye out and looking that way. I'm sure it will not surprise you that I was terrified that it would come back. Fortunately, it didn't. As soon as it was completely gone from my view, I bolted back down to the bottom of the trail and got myself near some other people. I decided to suck it up, though, and finish out my weekend but I can tell you one thing for sure. I did stay close to other people the rest of my time there and looked over my shoulder a lot. By the time the weekend was done and I was getting in my car and driving home, I think I was even more scared at that point. Like the experience had gotten even more intense once my adrenaline wore off and I could really think about it, especially sitting in the car with nothing else to distract me. In fact, when I got home, I couldn't stop shaking, and all I could think about was what if that thing had decided to stop and kill me? What on earth could have caused it to just walk on by like that? I still don't know, but that hike has changed me forever. This story comes to us from August of 1995. When I was a teenager about 25 years ago, I was a counselor at a sleepaway camp in Massachusetts. 
I loved being a counselor back then, but of course I was also basically still a kid. So all of us teen counselors had a habit of sneaking off together at night. So one night that summer, we decided to do our usual stroll up to the lake while our supervisors and the camp kids slept. It was about midnight, and there were about ten of us who joined in the adventure. I went ahead of everybody, leading them all to the lake, planning to swim, excited to be out. I liked showing off that even girls could be daring. I even started singing and dancing along the way. Well, at least once we were outside of camp itself. Eventually, I arrived at the clearing right before the lake and yelled something back to my friends like, Here we are! But whatever I said, the noise of it at least, freaked something out. And suddenly, this screech echoed from beside me and radiated out all over the lake. I jumped and I actually fell backwards as my friends were just making it to the beach to meet me. And then there was another screech. And this time, it sounded like it was screaming the word go, but from this very guttural place. The voice almost even sounded like it was two different vocal cords, both high and low at the same time. We didn't know if we were being tricked by a supervisor or a camper or if something really bad was about to happen. I pulled myself up and stood there, standing firm, watching as leaves moved back and forth ahead of us. And then, from out behind a tree, about ten feet from us emerged this extremely tall, thin figure, almost shadow-like. It had to be about seven or eight feet tall, but it was extremely gaunt, and it was like it had been malnourished. Even the shadow of its belly showed that it was swollen with hunger. The creature glowed a bit as it stepped into the moonlight. It was gangly, and it had its arms twisted in front of it. Its legs were bowed as it stumbled over towards us, making low grunts, and it held itself hunched over as it got closer. But watching it move towards us seemed to stretch on forever for some reason. I could see its body a little more as it got closer, but its gray color was oddly dark, like the contrast was all off, like it wasn't even part of this world. I could make out something of a mouth, but it looked like there were bits of flesh stretched over it. I couldn't see any eyes yet. I was assuming that they were either closed or weren't even there. And then as I'm looking at this thing, I hear most of my friends screaming and running away behind me. When I started screaming for them to not leave me there alone, the thing got spooked again and it screeched right in my face. The smell of death and rot came from its mouth. And then it stood up tall again and screamed into the air. There were other screams off in the distance, too, that sounded like they were replying to the creature standing in front of me. I could only assume that there were more of them out there, and that was not a good feeling. And then this thing looked back down at me, now with wide, furious eyes. I was startled again by the sheer rage and the fear that came from those eyes. It screeched one more time, and then it took off running across the lake. I basically watched as it walked on water to the far other side. I was the last one back to camp that night. I think it was because I was so terrified that I went into shock. I think that because I wandered back so slowly and I couldn't get myself in gear. No one else saw as much as I did, and they don't believe it was even real. Many of them think that that midnight trip had been learned about and that this was some kind of reverse prank on us to get us to start behaving. I know what I saw, and it was not someone playing around. Later that summer, after getting home, I went to the library, and I looked up cryptids and paranormal creatures to try to see what it could have been, but nothing exactly matched. All these years, and it is still a mystery to me. I was jogging on a trail near where I was camping with my boyfriend. We had rented a small cabin outside the Great Smoky Mountains National Park for a weekend in the summer of 2019. Jogging was more my thing than his, and I was an early riser, so I left him sleeping and headed off. I was never really afraid because it was something I was used to. I had been jogging practically my whole life, and usually alone. This morning didn't start out any differently than any other, and I was ready to start my day. 
That morning I was running on a paved road that cut through the forest. It was early and the sun hadn't risen all the way, so the tree cover made it a little bit dark. I had my headphones in too, which I know was a stupid idea, so I wasn't really paying attention to my surroundings, just watching for any people or cars coming towards me. And that's when I noticed something in my peripheral vision. It kept up with my pace too, which was really weird and definitely made me uncomfortable. I immediately stopped jogging and watched as whatever it was continued to move past me. It wasn't an animal. It was something I couldn't really describe. It was there, but it also wasn't. I could see it, but when I focused on it, it disappeared. And then out of nowhere, a thick fog began to settle on the road. I couldn't see anything in front of me at all now, and that's when I started hearing laughter and footsteps running around the pavement. The noise surrounded me, seemed to come from all directions. I squinted into the fog and could eventually make out the shape of a young girl, no older than sixteen, appearing more and more clearly as other small fog clouds rushed by her. She was wearing the same clothes I was, blue shorts and a gray t-shirt, and her hair was long and brown with red streaks in it. She looked exactly like me but a younger version. I stared at her for a second and her eyes were almost beckoning me into the fog, and then she morphed back into a cloud and rushed back and forth with others running around. My heart stopped as I realized that this was actually happening. This was real. I was really seeing this stuff. I turned back and saw the thick fog behind me too. There was no way to get out of it. I turned forward again and there she was, smiling now. And now next to her was a shadow, and it looked like its hand was on her shoulder. The shadow was a very tall person, and it looked like it was the shape of an older man. His hand, though basically featureless, gripped the girl's shoulder tightly. I froze, watching them both standing there side by side, staring at me. And then I just watched as their outlines disappeared. The fog was sucking them in, like it was just zapping them away. Suddenly the road was silent and completely clear, as if nothing had happened at all. I had no idea what just happened, but I knew it couldn't be good. I ran until I got back to our cabin, locked myself in the bathroom. My boyfriend woke up when he heard me in there trying to calm myself down, but there was nothing that could make me feel better after seeing what I saw. He tried his best, but in the end, we just needed to leave. That same day, we left and went back home immediately. We were both shaken up by the experience, honestly, because my boyfriend believed me. He could see it in my face, too. He was always one to believe in weird, occult things, but he never really spoke to me again about it, mostly for fear of bringing back the memories of whatever it was. My name is Sarah, and I'm an avid outdoors enthusiast. I love hiking, camping, and anything else that gets me close to nature. I currently live east of San Francisco in the Bay Area of California, and I'm used to seeing all kinds of wildlife. So a few weeks ago, I went camping with my boyfriend at a place called Del Val Regional Park. It's about 45 minutes away from where we live, so it's easy to spend time there, and being there gets us out and closer to nature. We decided to go camping and were looking forward to it because it was easy to get to, and it had everything there. Everything we needed to be comfortable, like showers, bathrooms, etc. And the park is huge. There are tons of trails that stretch for miles and miles through the hills and valleys, so even though you're surrounded by people, you can easily get lost if you choose one of the many available paths. So... We arrived at the park on a Saturday morning, and we set up camp on one of the more secluded areas of the park. Our campsite was near a small creek that fed into the lake. It was pretty, but we didn't spend too much time there because we wanted to explore the trails, move our legs, and get some exercise. So we headed out right away, and we took a long hike along one of the trails until we were deep into the trees. We were just walking, enjoying the fresh air and the nature around us. After a while, we came to a small clearing in the trees, 
It was an open area with plenty of sunlight and fresh air flowing through it. I could tell that this spot had been used as a campsite before because there were ashes from a fire pit and some other signs that someone had been there before. We continued our walk along, taking some time to relax in the clearing for a while, and after about another half hour or so of hiking, we came to another clearing, very similar to the first one we'd come across earlier, and again I noticed all the signs that showed that someone had been there before, ashes from a fire pit, etc., and that's when something caught my eye up high in one of the trees at the second clearing. It looked at first like a piece of fabric hanging from one of the trees. I thought it was weird, but my boyfriend and I just kept walking. As we did, I glanced over at the tree again, and I saw what thought was the fabric on the tree, but it was not fabric at all. It took me a few seconds to realize exactly what I was looking at, but when it hit me, I stopped dead in my tracks, making my boyfriend stop as well. What's wrong? he said. Look up there, I said, pointing to the moving object on the tree. Oh shit, he said, after taking a closer look at it. It was a dead animal, hanging from the tree. Its skin had been removed and it looked like it had been gutted, but that wasn't what freaked me out. My heart started racing and chills ran up and down my spine. Next to the first dead animal was a dead rabbit hanging from the same tree, and next to that was a dead squirrel, and so on. There were at least ten carcasses hanging in the tree. It looked like something had killed all of these animals and strung them up on the tree, leaving their carcasses to rot. What is this? I asked my boyfriend as we stood there looking at this horrifying display of death. I don't know, he said, but let's get out of here. Yeah, I said in agreement. We turned around and started walking back through the clearing, but before we'd gone more than a few steps, something caught my eye in the bushes near where we had been. At first, I thought it was just a shadow, but then I realized it was moving. I couldn't see what it was at first, but whatever it was, I could tell it was big, and it was coming towards us. I grabbed my boyfriend's arm, we started to run out of the clearing and back onto the trail, but before we could make it to safety, something came crashing through the bushes after us. It was fast, whatever it was and it was headed straight for us. We ran as fast as we could, but whatever was chasing us was gaining on us quickly. I glanced over my shoulder and saw something that looked like a hairy, human-like creature running after us on two legs. But before I could get a better look at it, it was upon us. It tackled my boyfriend, and he went down hard, hitting his head on a rock. I tried to run too, but it was too fast. It caught me and threw me to the ground. I hit my head as well, and everything went black. The next thing I remember is waking up in a hospital bed. My boyfriend and I were both in there, with concussions and some other injuries, but we were going to be all right. As for what chased us and attacked us in the woods, the authorities never did find it. But based on the descriptions we gave them, they actually believe that it was some sort of a Bigfoot creature or Sasquatch. I couldn't believe they actually admitted it. I haven't been back to that park since then, and I never will. And I would advise anyone else who goes there to be on the lookout for anything strange. Because you never know what might be lurking in the woods, ready to pounce. It was June of 2015, and I was out on Lake Weramog in Connecticut, camping with my boyfriend. We had decided to lay out under the stars the first night there because the weather was so perfect. It started out being quite a romantic trip, and we had dinner right there next to the water. After our last swim, we laid out on towels and eventually fell asleep, just like this, tired from spending the evening swimming. And then around 2 o'clock in the morning, I woke up to use the bathroom. The restrooms were not too far from our camp, so I decided not to wake my boyfriend. I would just walk over there by myself and use the bathroom using the moonlight. I did also bring my cell phone, too, for extra light. And then when I got to the bathrooms, which were basically just a small building with two doors, I noticed something was moving around behind them. At first, I just told myself it would have been a small animal, so I went about my business. But outside, I could still hear some rustling. And I kept trying to ignore it so I wouldn't freak myself out. 
When I finished and opened the door, I saw a small girl, maybe six or seven years old, wearing a blue dress standing outside the building, just standing there, staring at me, like she was waiting for me to say something or do something. I wondered if she needed help. When I first saw her, I was also kind of freaked out that she was alone, but I figured she was just there with her parents and needed to use the bathroom, so came over alone. I asked her if she needed help back to camp. She put her finger over her lips and whispered the strangest thing. Only speak when spoken to. She then put her hand back behind her and pulled out what looked like a rope, and that was totally confusing to me. The girl then started walking towards me, and I started getting freaked out. I froze right there as she reached out her hand to hold me the rope, and when I put my hand out to grab it, my hand went straight through it, and I started screaming. The girl jumped back and screamed something totally inaudible, and after that she just disappeared, and the rope was gone too. I took off with the girl's words echoing in my head as I ran. Only speak when spoken to. What did she mean by that? What did that even mean? And why did my hand go right through the rope? I didn't have time to think about it now, though. I had to get out of there. I didn't know where I was going, but I didn't care. I just had to get away from that whole place. My boyfriend must have heard me screaming because he followed me to the car and we both drove home. I never went back to that place again. I told him all about it. Neither of us have actually been back there camping again. And I don't know what was wrong with that girl, or if she was even real, or did I imagine her, but it sure did seem like she was trying to tell me something. Our next story takes place in April of 2022 in Louisiana. I've been following your site for quite a while now, and I finally have something to report about myself. It was crazy. It all happened about three weeks ago at Purple Heart Memorial Park in Louisiana. The pond there usually has a ton of people fishing, but this was a Wednesday morning in the spring and a lot of kids were still at school and parents were at work. My friend and I were fishing there by ourselves, standing at the edge of the stocked pond. We had both graduated about a year ago and we were at the point in our lives where we were trying to figure it all out and look for good jobs but it had been rough going and we just needed a day's break. I grew up fishing and I knew this place well and it was within walking distance to our houses. We were planning on going back to the job hunt the next day. We'd been fishing a few hours with no luck when all of a sudden my friend's rod bent way over. He reeled in his line and pulled out a very large catfish, but we put the catfish back in the water and continued to fish. We weren't after anything big like that and I had always felt bad catching them. He then got a bite again, and this time pulled out a small trout. And as I turned to help him get the fish off the hook, I noticed something across the water. It was submerged, but bouncing up and down, out of the water, coming out, and also coming towards us. And I could see something that looked like antlers or crooked horns poking up over the water. And I swear there were two eyes, black, with white spots in the middle. I grabbed my friend and told him to look, but by the time he did, it went back under. He said it was probably nothing, just some sticks. I sat there a little startled, but I put my line back in the water and sat quietly as we waited for more fish to bite. Another half hour passed when my rod suddenly doubled over. My friend tried to help me pull whatever it was in, but my rod snapped in half. I had never had anything like that happen before, and I got scared backed up from the water and scooted back. There was no way this was a catfish. My friend looked at me like I was crazy until a head, just like the one I had seen earlier, popped up out of the water. Whatever it was, it walked on the bottom of the lake, and as it came close, it revealed itself to us. It was zombie-like. White skin stretched over a skull with tears in the flesh where the cheekbones jutted out. The skull itself was giant with these crooked horns pointing out from its temples and there was fur from the back of its head that traveled down to its body where it was more prevalent. Its chest and its limbs also looked skeletal underneath stretched flesh and fur. 
As it stood over us dripping wet, I could see long claws on its human-like hands and its feet. We stared at it. It stared back, huffing and puffing in a fury. I now could also see that my fishing hook was sticking out of its shoulder. The creature reached up, ripped it out, and threw it at me, narrowly missing my head. I got up, dropped all of my fishing gear, and started to run. My friend right behind me. We ran all the way back home without stopping. I didn't even tell my parents because I was afraid they wouldn't believe me even though they kept asking what was wrong. I just told them that I had had a fight with my friend and was upset about it. But then I told my other friends, but they laughed at me. The two of us were the only ones that believed anything supernatural happened. And then the next day we went back to see if there was any proof that this thing had been there and to also gather our fishing gear. But it wasn't there. But there were people fishing and nothing seemed out of the ordinary. All I found was the fishing hook with what looked like rotting flesh stuck to it. Not wanting to take it home, my friend and I accepted defeat and we never talked about it again. The next story takes place in June of 1999. I was camping with a good friend of mine. It was 1999, and at the time we had been friends for over 20 years. We were camping at Lost Dutchman State Park in Arizona, which was a few hours from our houses, and we had been out there for a few days before it happened. We weren't camping with our children this time because we needed our own little getaway, which would work out best for us later. We had set up our tents side by side, sharing a small wall between us. We were also on the edge of the campground, so we had more trees around us. The view all around was rocks and cactus plants for a mile at least. It was late at night, around 11 o'clock at night, and we were sitting outside our tents just talking about life. We weren't feeling vulnerable or scared, even though no one else was close to us, because we knew that if anything happened or we yelled or screamed, someone would hear us. But we had let our guard down, and the first thing that brought us back to high alert was a strange sound. A loud screech like a man's voice and then some banging. We looked over to where it was coming from. It sounded about 30 feet from us to the left. And as we were looking in that direction, that's when we both saw something that stepped out from the trees. My friend grabbed onto me, terrified that something really bad was about to happen. We could only make out the silhouette at first. Something standing tall on hind legs, like some sort of animal. Not on all fours, though. That was not what I was expecting to see at all. And its arms were recoiling open and closed with long claws at the ends. We couldn't make out anything else, and we were ready to run. It could have been a wolf for all we knew. But then it began walking towards us on two legs. We jumped up, grabbed each other, backed up into the tiny space between our tents, Tears were streaming down my face as it slowly walked towards us and into the light of our campfire. It had hair all over its body, thick like a bear's, not a dog's. But it was massive, and it stopped right in front of our tents and stared at us. To this day, I can still see into its eyes. They were almost human-like and green in color. The thing sniffed around us with its long snout, it was appearing more like a wolf now, but something about its arms and chest and the gestures it was making were so human. We held our breath. We waited to see what it would do next. But then, it suddenly continued walking past our tents and right out of the campsite, as if we were just in its way. As we watched it head back into the trees on the other side of our camp, but it never turned around. It just kept walking. We stayed up all night, afraid to move or leave, and then the next morning I wanted to investigate the area it came out from, so I took a walk there alone while my friend packed up the things. And there, in the bushes, I saw something so strange, a pile of clothes. And beside the clothes was a small campsite, but it had been torn apart. There was no blood, though, or anything but there were large scratches all along the trees. 
I reported to my friend what I found, but she didn't want to know anything about it. She never wanted to go over and see it either. She just wanted to get home. We never took our kids back there. She and I still don't talk about what we saw that night, even though we're still close friends and we see each other often. I think we're just burying the memories so that we aren't terrified. First is a female camping group in May of 2015. Instead of a traditional bridal party, I went camping with my friends in the Sierra Nevada mountains. We all grew up together in Northern California, and this was more our speed for these kinds of parties. We were more outdoorsy than fancy, and we liked hiking and fishing. So we set out and set up camp at the Grays Mountain Campground. It was early spring, so there weren't that many people out. The weather was mild, and there was just a slight chill here and there. We were sitting around the fire the first night, talking about everything and nothing, and having a couple of beers when there was a noise. It was a low, guttural growl that was barely audible, but it was definitely something. I've heard coyotes and bears and mountain lions, and this was none of those. My friends and I all froze, looked at each other. I had a knife that I had brought, and we were definitely scared, but I felt a little prepared if it were an angry animal. There were more of us than there were of it, too, so we were also confident that we would scare it away. Together, we slowly got up to face that area of the trees, and there, between two of the closest trees, was a black shadow blocking out the forest behind it. It didn't take me long to realize the shadow was actually a solid figure. It growled again and took a step closer to us, almost coming close enough for us to see in the light from our campfire. We all took a few steps back, but I kept my eyes on this thing. It was huge, easily seven feet tall, built like an NFL player. I mean, this thing looked like it could tear down a tree. My brain was scrambling for answers and my legs wanted to run, but the confusion in my body just made me focus on its face and the hideous details I noticed about it. It appeared to us standing there on its hind legs as if it was half dog and half human. Its arms had talon-like claws at the end that seemed to be all different lengths. Its snout had hair on it and its eyes were yellow with black pupils. It had ears that were pointed, but not like a cat's, more wolf-like, dog-like. The fur on its body seemed to be patchy, which made me think it might be sick or injured, and its skin looked stretched over the ribs as if it were malnourished, and that also made me think something could be wrong with it. It leaned forward and held its arms out, growling in our direction, turning its head back and forth. It sniffed at us and then shambled backwards and started howling at the sky. It was a pathetic howl. And then it turned and ran on all fours, disappearing into the darkness. We all just stood there for a minute trying to process what had happened. We packed up our camp quickly and drove out of there as fast as we could. I'm still not sure what it was, but it wasn't anything normal. I've been camping my whole life and nothing like that has ever happened to me or my friends. It was something different that night, something warning us away from the campgrounds. We chose never to camp there again. It was better to heed the warning than dismiss whatever that thing could be. It was like hell had come alive, and I definitely didn't want to mess with that. Next is a lone female hiker and her dog in July of 2014. I've been doing this hiking thing for as long as I can remember. I had a very active childhood, and as an adult, I spent a lot of my vacation time on hiking trips traveling to various places in the country. I had decided when I graduated college that I would visit Death Valley and camp out at Sunset Campground while I hiked through there. I mean, Death Valley is one of the most notorious places on the planet, so I figured who wouldn't want to go and experience that? I usually went everywhere with my dog Sandra, I know that's a unique name for a dog, but that was pretty much it, just us. But this location would be different for her. I was worried about the heat getting to her, 
but I made sure I had enough supplies to keep her comfy and hydrated. We got there. I was super excited. I couldn't wait to get started. I set up my tent by my designated fire pit. There was no one else there at all, and the area had no tables or anything. The whole thing was situated within a grouping of hedges, just the fire pits were out in the open for safety. In the area, there was just one other fire pit, and then desert, complete with views of rocks jutting out of the ground, mountains as far around as you could see in all directions. I couldn't wait to explore, but I needed to get something to eat first. Sandra and I sat by our fire pit. I dug through my bag for my sandwich. Sandra had some food in her bowl. I was listening to the sounds of a loud bird's echo, and then it would disappear for some time. There was basically silence. Nothing moved, which made the area peaceful. Sandra would sometimes pant a bit and then stop, and it would be quiet again. I was really enjoying it when suddenly I heard something coming through the hedges behind me. I knew I shouldn't have sat with my back to them. I was afraid to turn around, but I knew I had to, and now my dog was on alert too. There, between two hedges, was a man in ripped clothing, crouching there. I could see his eyes, and they were blood red. I was frozen for a moment, and then I noticed that he had very long fingernails. They were yellowish and looked like they had been growing for years. He looked like someone who spent too much time in the sun, but I don't mean that in a good way. He was pretty blistered up. His hair was stringy, long, dirty, blonde, with bits of brown in it. It looked like he hadn't combed it or washed it in months, if not years. I thought about my knife in my pocket, but Sandra was two steps ahead already, lunging from her lead towards the hedges. The man looked at me with his eyes and smiled revealing horrible blackened teeth, some missing. He then began to stand up, and I could see he was holding something in his hand, and Sandra was about three feet from him now, but he didn't flinch. He held up and showed me that he was holding an old, rusty knife that looked like it might have been something useful at one point, but was now just old and dull. He backed away through the bushes, keeping his eyes on us as Sandra barked her head off while not taking her eyes off of him. And then he just disappeared, as quickly and as stealthily as he had appeared. Well, there was no way I was going to sleep that night after that. I packed everything back up and made my way out of there as quickly as humanly possible. Just because that guy went away does not mean he wouldn't come back. I mean, he had obviously been in that area for a very long time. I reported everything that happened, but nothing ever came of it that I know. There's always talk of hill people or whatever, but out there in that sun, it had to be something extraordinary for anyone to survive out there. Next, we have a male, seasoned park ranger in February of 2017. I was a ranger in Sequoia National Forest up until about five years ago. I've since moved on, but I loved my time there and I had been a park ranger for many, many years. Decades, in fact. It was just this one thing that happened that I know was what set off my path to retirement. I had been doing great at the park, and of course I got to know the campgrounds really well. I was lucky to work long hours in summer, but in the winter it was much quieter, and there was a lot of basically empty time to fill. I adjusted by doing a lot of nature patrols, just enjoying the outdoors, even when it was cold. On the night that I'm referencing, I was asked to do an overnight shift. I wasn't a huge fan of that, but I said yes because ultimately I liked my job. I was able to stay overnight in the ranger station and I could just lock myself in the back office when I wanted to rest. That night, I was asleep between midnight and 1 a.m. when I began to hear something outside the door of the office moving around. It was nothing violent, just footsteps across the station floor along with the sounds of things shuffling around. Well, no one was supposed to be around, and this was pretty late for somebody to just be stopping by. So I was terrified to look out because it could be anybody or anything. But I had my job to do, protecting the place, 
so I grabbed the pistol in the drawer and walked up to my side of the closed door. I got myself into position and simultaneously screamed for the person to stop while I flung the door open. And there, in the corner by the front door, I immediately saw a figure, the shape of a man, but he wasn't menacing in any way. In fact, he looked like he had been crying and was in need of help. His hands were above his head due to seeing the gun. He was wearing just a t-shirt and shorts like a jogger, but it was a cold night out there. He looked cold, but he wasn't shivering. His eyes looked hazy, and I wondered if he had been drinking and wandered and got lost. I asked him why he was there and if anything was wrong. He told me he was just lost and that he had been for days. I looked at his skin. It was pale but clean. How could he have been missing for days and stayed clean and lost for days in those clothes? I walked over and sat him down, my hands on his cold shoulders. He was freezing. I told him to hold on while I got him a blanket and ran to the back of the office. I grabbed one of the blankets we kept just for these kinds of situations and walked back into the room telling him to wrap up. But when I came back, he was gone. I looked around the station calling for him and even looked outside the building. There was nobody around at all. All I could hear was the crispness of the cold air. I went back to the back office, locked myself in, not sure of what I had just witnessed. I shook a bit and wrapped myself in the blanket and thought about the strange lost man again. As I thought back on him and what he looked like, his shorts were a bit short, even besides the fact that it was winter, and his shirt had a logo that I now recognized as a store from the mid-80s. I remembered his hair was very odd for the current trends, too, and his clean-shaven face had no color at all, not even a hint. All of this info came crashing down on me as I realized that I may have spoken to and touched someone or something that wasn't of this world. I looked up missing person cases but found nothing that even sounded like the man I saw. I'm definitely convinced I met a ghost that night and it has stuck with me ever since. And now you know the reason I soon put in for my retirement. I must say I do miss my time at the park, but ultimately I'm now able to sleep much better knowing that I'm not exposing myself to what might be hiding there.